Welcome back to Politically Speaking with Gene Covison. In 15 states and the District of Columbia, independent voters can't cast ballots in primary elections. A San Diego attorney is spearheading a challenge to New Jersey set up in an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's meet Chad Peace of the Independent Voter Project, which is taking the cause nationwide, and Tony Kovarek, chairman of the Republican Party of San Diego County, and I imagine he will offer some divergent perspective on what Chad is saying and uh, other premises here. Um, Chad, we will start with you since uh, you are going to the nine big ones, uh, SCOTUS with this. Um, to what extent do you think uh, those justices are going to say, yeah, let's, uh, let's grant cert on this, we'll take the case and we just can't to, um, wait to dig into the issues that could be nationwide or at least affect all these other states? Well, well, I think we're realistic in our chances of it being pulled up right away. I mean, the most recent gay rights decision, that, took, that was a long time in coming. It was in the courts for you know, well over a decade. I think right now what we have is a lot of um, discussion going on. There's, there's lawsuits in states challenging open primaries. There's lawsuits challenging closed primaries. You saw the most recent Arizona decision on right. gerrymandering. I think these issues are starting to bubble to the surface, and I, what we tried to do is go to the core of what the real critical issue and is, can you condition our, partici our participation in the democratic process on joining a private organization? So in other words, a judge says, well, gee, if you wanna, if you wanna vote in this election, uh, why don't you just join a party? What's the big problem with that? Sure, well, I think, I mean, we'd say it absurd if you had to join a church, one of two churches to practice your religion, right? Why do you have to join one of two parties in order to participate in the democratic process? Tony, your take on all this? I think it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Anybody can join a political party. This effort by this organization here in town to reduce the influence of political parties is actually just a front group for cor big corporate interests and unions because when you, when you de-emphasize the influence of political parties which are transparent, broad-based, accessible, and I myself you know, started 12 years ago, I became a citizen, started volunteering, wasn't connected at all, and I became chairman of a local Republican party. It is open for anybody to join and participate. That's how regular people participate in the political process, not through shadow organizations that hide behind a P.O. box and five board members that are ostensibly independent. If you're independent, then I'm an astronaut. Chad, rebuttal? Well, I think um, we rejected the idea of just join a party. That mentality came out of other countries, and we rejected that ideology. What's special about this country is that we believe in individual rights. I think actually the opposite, what the parties are demonstrating today in the national media is they're the ones distancing folks from the process. by having Independent a, voters are now the, the kind of in, the trending uh, re registrations. Right, and, they, and they're all across the map. They're left of the Democratic Party. They're right of the Republican Party. Independent voters want to decide on their own terms who the candidates are and who they support. They might be registered Republicans. They might be registered Democrats. The point we're making is that when you have a political process, I mean, if you think about this in the economy, if we had an economy and there was consumers, right, and we said two businesses have exclusive access to those consumers, we'd say, well, that's a monopoly. But here in New Jersey, 47% of the citizens are registered independent of the two parties. And the state of New Jersey has said, we're going to spend $12 million of your tax dollars funding a, an election process, a public election process, and you have to join a party to vote. That's an, join the party is a is a uh, something we rejected in this country very specifically. Tony, counterpoint. No, we did not. And what your organization has done is effectively eliminate minor parties from the process. You pushed Proposition 14, which allows only the top two uh, vote getters in in June to make it down to the primary on to, into November, which means only a Republican or only a Democrat, or in some cases, only two Democrats or two Republicans, that'll, make, that'll be the choice for voters. If you're an independent, uh, truly registered independent, or Green Party, or Libertarian Party, or, or a smattering of these independent parties, you have reduced the amount of choice that voters have through your efforts. And your organization is backed by big business and big unions because when you reduce the influence of democratically elected political parties, you elevate the influence of big business and big labor and that's where your organization is coming from. So you have zero credibility on this issue and people should look into the funding behind your organization and the incestuous relationship between all these independent groups that your front group. Would you like for. to address that? Well, first, the largest unions in California adamantly oppose top two. Um, I think, you know, something people don't question is that the largest corporations, the largest union in this country is the Republican and Democratic parties. Politically, they're private corporations. They've gone to the court to assert that fact, right? They are 
corporations, nonprofit corporations, and you know, look at the money that funds them. We're not anti-party. We're not anti-union. We're pro-voters. So what top two did, all it did was say the purpose of our election process isn't going to serve parties. And for the first time in our history, we have a primary election that its purpose is to serve voters. Tony, last word. Take it to the break. Uh, your organization doesn't file, you have over $750,000 that you were contributed in 2013, which wasn't filed until November 2014. And it says here that the wholly owned subsidiary of, of son of Steve Peace received one third of, the, of those funds, a quarter of a million dollars. Is there any relation there? there? Quick rebuttal here because we've got to. We spent a quarter of a million dollars taking a case all the way to the Supreme Court. We have a news website that reaches four million uh, people. The Republican Party spent three million dollars running a negative campaign in a district, and he's going to complain that we spent half a million dollars taking an issue to the Supreme Court. We've got to have a Touchy. rematch downstream too. Uh, maybe there will be an invitation for next week or next month. I'm going to be on vacation for a while. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Chad Peace, Tony Kavark, and still ahead on politically speaking, Uncle Sam has unloaded this property. Something about the cross on it. Is the sale really a done deal? And the city of San Diego owns this property. Will a new stadium go there? And if not, where does that leave the Chargers? Stick around.